Let's talk about my revised testing methodology for Apple M4 generation SoC. This is Artis Right. So if you're newer to the channel, welcome. And I do a lot of Mac comparison, especially when it comes to creative workflow for photographer and also for video workflow. These are the workflow that I'm most comfortable with is one that I use and I can really go in and analyze the machine in terms of what processes is using, what it is not using or how it is not utilizing the system efficiently. I avoid testing other softwares because I just don't want to be a comprehensive testing channel. I want to test in a subject that I understand it best and I can speak about it in a very educated manner. So if you're new, this is going to be fun. But if you already follow my channel before, I'm going to spend a little bit more time talking about this revising testing methodology. So you have a better idea of some of the changes that I'm doing compared to the other previous tests that I've run before. And the results may not be comparable to what have come before as well. So. When it comes to these new machines, I am using stock machines. Most of them are just going to be regular stock. They all start at 16 gigabytes. I think that's really awesome. But when it comes to the previous generation machine that I have in the studio, many times I would get these machines, I would test them and they are my client machines. So I would hand them to my clients or I would sell some of my testing machine out. And then later on, I would buy them when the price drops in the market. So I usually get what I can get my hands on, meaning that you know, sometimes they're not necessarily the stock machine and we kind of go with what we have at that point in time. But that's just something to let you guys know. Uh, a few things I did find out in this testing round is that the M1 generation SOC, just a regular M1, is not really doing so good for generations in anymore where there are some tasks running on Sonoma that it could not finish, it just refused to finish or it just crashed out where it just times out overall. And I've seen that happening a few times. Whereas in the more pro oriented SOC, the M1 Pro and M1 Max, it does a better job at finishing those tasks and the machines are generally much faster too. This is part of the reason why I said, if you are working as a creative pro for revenue, my recommendation is to get the pro oriented SOC because you are going to get a much longer lasting machine and much better value for the performance or much better performance per dollar that you're really paying the money into. And even if you're that close, meaning that if you're looking at the regular M4 and the M4 Pro and the price is between two to four hundred dollar difference, if you're short on that money, my recommendation is to wait and upgrade to the M4 Pro and you're going to get a much better machine overall out of that. So that's my thought on that one. So let's quickly talk about the revised testing methodology. 90% of the tests that I'm doing are new. The only one that I'm actually taking the result from the previous generations or the previous tests is the Final Cut Pro export. Everything else is pretty much all retested. So with this, I'm also changing the base 1000 files from 1000 Nikon DA50 45 megapixel compressed lossless to a Sony A7R5 61 megapixel compressed lossless large. So this is going to demand more of a system, meaning that the numbers you're really seeing in any of these tests can't really be compared to the previous tests that I have ran on this channel. Now, the other thing though, is for the regular vanilla or the regular M variance machine, this would be the M1, M2, M3, it takes that much longer to do the test, double the time on the Pro, the Max generation machine. And for the most part, I don't have that much time. So what I'm doing with those, and I've run some testing on this already too, is that I am testing those with 500 raw file instead of 1000, and I'm taking whatever time we get and doubling that so that it would be comparable to the Pro and the Max SOC. And I've also, like I said, done testing where I'm exporting 500 and exporting 1000, comparing the doubling of time. That method, the numbers are generally written in the margin of error that I'm not really worried about the variation quite as much. So the regular variants are using the doubling time method. So, all right, uh, this task can generally be seen in Lightroom Classic and Capture One Import and Export and Lightroom Export. So Lightroom CC Export uses these. Other than that, the testing are pretty much standard and the same. So a couple of thoughts that I found out in testing this is Lightroom Classic Import generation is really slow and for the most part i find that rather interesting however capture one is way faster now and capture one did probably change some of the engine or the code or speed up the engine whereas utilizing more of a system resources so the generation for preview even at 5120 pixels is definitely much faster however 
is the other way around on export, where Capture One utilizing GPU just takes forever to export, where Lightroom Classic and also Lightroom just pretty much spins on the export and just does it really fast. So when it comes to Lightroom noise reduction or AI noise reduction in Lightroom Classic, I am now running two separate tests on those. One of them with one file just to see how long it takes and the other one with a group of 10 files from a variety of different cameras, A7R5, Sony, Nikon cameras, pretty much like a variety of them. And with those ones, a couple of things that I did note is that version 14 for Lightroom Classic, Adobe have gone back to using the GPU to run those tasks again rather than using the NPU, which we did see some speed improvement. Part of the reason why is because there are quality issues. That's the reason why they're going back. And this is also another reason why many of the other companies that are really you know, wanting to run the task on the NPU on Apple Silicon is not really doing that. Now, I'm not sure if this is a bug on Apple part, if this is a coding thing on Adobe part, I'm not 100% sure of that, but it's just something to note that we're not really gonna get the chance to really see the NPU performance from the photography AI perspective on that directly. Now, there is another task that is using AI and that is doing selective adjustment or localized adjustment. So what I have done is generated a group of 10 files with sky masking and people masking doing different adjustment on them with people detection and I'm doing the sync for these 10 files meaning that I have one already adjusted and I'm syncing the setting across um, the 10 files. Interestingly enough this didn't take as long as I thought it did it was actually the task ran and finished a lot faster but we'll get to see a variation I might revise this before I submit the final result or share with you the final result I'm not 100% sure yet whether I'm going to have time to do this or not but so far it's a proof of concept and it's a move in the right direction if you have any thoughts on that on what you like to see in terms of like synchronizing and timing this I mean that would be one that I can really do because it's something where I can take a group of files sync it across and depending on the speed of machine is going to run slightly different so that's something to think about there HDR and panoramic merge remains the same as far as Photoshop go I am still going to use Lloyd chamber uh, digital Lloyd test because it have worked really well to just share with you the result uh, the result from it but what I'm also doing too is we are adding a whole bunch of Puget Bench tests and we're going to be sharing both the score from the machine and also timing from the test. So for Photoshop, we're going to get that. Uh, for Premiere Pro and for Resolve, we're going to get that. So rather than coming up with my own test for Premiere Pro and Resolve, I am using Puget Bench test because they are a pretty comprehensive test from the video files that they load in and run some tests and everything. So we'll be using those and we'll be seeing, like I said, the score and also the timing. Now, when it comes to After Effects, I'm still using Adobe Benchmark, so you'll get to see the result from that. Like I said, Final Cut Pro Auto Export, because it dips into the hardware encoder decoder engine and machine, I am going to do some reference testing, but for the majority of the parts, the timing are very similar to what have come before, so I'm going to take the timing from the previous test and apply it forward. So a couple of things to notice that all these tests are done on Sequoia 15.0.1. I did run a few reference tests on some machines when I update to 15.1. The results are pretty much within the margin of error with 15.1 being able to finish certain tasks for certain programs slightly faster. I'll pick some other random machines that I have, run some comparison, but for the most part, as of now anyway, I think the results where I'm gonna stick with is from 15.0.1. If I do see some tests that, or some random testing that shows a result that is drastically different, meaning that they're more than like probably three to five minutes apart, then yeah, it's probably something that I might look into do retesting. But right now, time is of an essence. I am going to be traveling to photo shoot, to conferences, so it's going to be tough for me to really get those out. So that's kind of the case with those. Uh, a few other things I do want to note and when it comes to these comparison is that I have one surprise computer that's going to get added in and that is the Razer Blade M18R1. This is a huge laptop. I mean, I'm just going to put this laptop here. This is comparing it to a lid of a 16 inch MacBook Pro and you can see that this is a much larger laptop, much taller and everything and much heavier as well. So this one has the... AMD Ryzen R9 7945HX is technically one of the more powerful processors on the market. This is not the 3D version, 64 gigabytes of memory, has a Radeon 7900M GPU on the inside, and it also comes with a Behemoth 300 and 
330 watt, I believe. Yep, 330 watt power brick, which is like huge and heavy. Interesting enough, they'll release a GAN version of this, which is much smaller, but I have the original one, so it's much larger. But anyway, we'll be splicing in these results so you can see how the top AMD is performing against Mac and where that lineup is coming in. So a couple of things is that I will always remind you that I am a one man crew and I try to get all the things correct, although I am only human and errors do happen. So that would be the case. If you find them, do point them out, but do be kind at the very same time because these things take a lot of effort to just reference the machine to do installation to test them it's a lot of time and effort put into it and like I said I'm the only person running all these tests and all my resources too uh, the other thing I also do want to note is I will try to get the chapter markers out as soon as possible but a lot of times those take time and I rather just jump on and film another video or edit another video out right away so chapter markers are gonna come but they may not come immediately when the video goes live also, let me know what you think about this. When the time comes, when I have those machines in the studio, do you want to see a live where I'm just really doing a testing on some of the more powerful machines to just get the result in real time? If that's something that you're interested, let me know. It might be something that I would consider, but anyway, share your thoughts with me in the comment section below. If you have any questions or comments as usual, share them with me. Please give this a like, subscribe, and hit the bell if you're new. I'm Art, and I thank you for your time.